Apparently, there's a lot of calculation needed to figure out exactly how many panels you need for your house, but don't worry. In this video, I'll guide you through the process step by step, and I promise it's going to be way easier than you might think. The number of solar panels you need can vary quite a bit depending on a lot of different factors, not just the manufacturer, brand, capacity, and the specific model of the panels themselves. A lot of this depends on when you use power, where you live, and honestly what you can actually afford to start with, you know, what direction it faces, things like that. These all play a crucial part in figuring out how many solar panels you need. Also, if you want your solar panels to produce 100% of the power for your home, there are some other things you need to keep in mind as well, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video and I'll have some other tips for you on that as well. All right, so to really understand how many solar panels you need for your home, you need to have three numbers first. The first one is that you need to know how much power your home uses every single day. Second, you need to understand how many peak sun hours your house gets, and this is going to depend greatly on where your house is located. And then last but not least, you need to know how much power the solar panels produce. All right, so first, let's tackle how much power your home uses per day. And don't worry, we're going to have some examples as we go along here. So even if you don't like math, this is going to be really easy to understand. So in order to find out this information, you need to grab a copy of your last month's utility bill. Ideally, you would want to look at your last 12 months of bills and look for your three highest months. Usually summer if you have air conditioning, winter if you heat with electricity. Why? Because sizing for your average month means you'll run short when you need power most. If you have an entire year's worth of information, then you can average that out and we can get a more accurate number. But if you only have the last month's information, that's fine as well. You can still do the math here. Let me show you what I mean. Sometimes you can log into your utility company's portal as well, and you can get your energy bills on that. So once you have your bill, you want to look for the number of kilowatt hours used. That's the number that you'll need to reference or to be able to add up over the last 12 months. By the way, if you don't have the number of kilowatt hours used, look for the beginning and the end meter readings, and then you'll be able to subtract the beginning meter reading from the end meter reading to see how much power in kilowatt hours you used in the last month. All right, so let's run through an example here. So this is a download from the information from an energy company's website, and this is the last 12 months worth of data. All we have to do here is add up the number of kilowatt hours used every month to get a total of 16,944 kilowatt hours for the entire year. Then we just need to divide that by 365 days, and that will give us a total of 46.4 kilowatt hours used per day, and that's gonna be the average. Like I said, depending on how much energy you use per day, it's gonna vary quite a bit depending on the seasons and in different situations. So in this example, 46.4 is the number of kilowatt hours we use every day. And if you don't have an entire year's worth of data on this, that's okay too. Don't divide it by 365 though. Just divide the last utility bill by 30 and that will give you your daily number. Next, we need to figure out how many peak hours or sometimes it's called the radiance value of your house. And what this really means is how many peak sun hours you get per day on average throughout the year, while also accounting for winter and summer. So in this case, we're looking at the United States, which is between roughly four and six hours. But to get a more accurate value, here's what you do. Pick any sunny day and go outside at 10 a.m. Look at your roof, specifically the area where you'd put panels. Is it in full sun or is there a shadow covering it? Maybe it's that big oak tree in your yard or your neighbor's house or even your own chimney casting shade. Now do the same thing at noon, then again at 2 p.m., and one more time at 4 p.m. What you're looking for is this. When does the sun first hit that section of your roof with no shadows? And when do the shadows start covering it up again? Let's say you check and find that your roof gets full sun from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's six hours of actual production time. But if shadows from that tree cover your roof until noon, and then your chimney blocks it after 3 p.m., well, now you're down to three hours. Those three hours are what you use in your calculation, and not the six hours that some online map tells you. Look, if you can't spend the day checking every hour, just figure out these two things. What time does the sun first hit your roof clearly? And what time do shadows start covering it? That gives you your real production window. Now, the last number we need in this equation is how many watts each solar panel produces. Now this is again gonna vary greatly depending on the manufacturer and the model of the solar panel that you're looking at. It could be anywhere from about 350 watts per panel to around 480 watts per panel. And if you don't know exactly what you're looking at right now, that's okay. 
I would probably go ahead and plug in about 400 watts, just so that way we can do some easy math and figure out a rough estimate as to how many panels you need. All right, so now that we have all these numbers, we can plug them into an equation and figure out how many solar panels you need. All right, so here's the formula. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just plug these numbers in one at a time. First, we'll plug in the number that we have in our example of 46.4 kilowatt hours in the daily section. Next, we know how many average sun hours we have, and that's four, so we'll put those here for the peak solar hours. And last but not least, we'll put in 400 for the solar panel watt rating, and that will give us this equation of 46.4 kilowatt hours divided by four times 400. All right, so first we need to tackle the four times 400 watts here. So this is gonna come out to a total of 1,600 watts. Then we need to take that 1,600 watts and divide it by 1,000 and that will give us the total number of kilowatt hours. So that leaves us with 46.4 kilowatt hours divided by 1.6 kilowatt hours. And that will give us finally the number of panels needed. And in this example, it's 29 panels. We would need 29 400 watt panels to be able to supply 100% of our energy needs for our house. Now, while trying to make this plan as simple as possible, there are still other factors that you need to consider as well. If you're looking at solar for your whole house, Things like whether or not you want to replace all of your energy bill with solar panels, or if you just want to replace a fraction of it or most of it with solar energy. You should also consider whether you want to participate in net metering, which allows you to sell excess energy back to your utility company, potentially earning credits or payments if your system generates more power than your home consumes. Additionally, physical aspects like the steepness of your roof and local weather conditions can impact the number of panels required and their overall efficiency. Each of these elements plays a critical role in determining the precise number of solar panels needed for your home. So to make this somewhat complicated process a lot easier, I highly recommend that you talk to a professional who can actually give you a comprehensive picture of what it would look like specifically for your house and for your goals, whether or not you need all the panels that I talked about in this video or whether or not you need fewer panels or if you have other things that you would need to consider that we really don't cover in this. But that would absolutely play a role. There are companies like Integrate Sun that can do quotes online. You don't have to necessarily have someone come out to your house to be able to do this. They can pull up your house through a satellite image. They can go over everything with you, typically like through a Zoom call, for example. So they can give you a really clear, comprehensive picture of what it would look like to have whole house home solar at your house. So if you're interested in understanding what this would look like for your house, I'll have a link in the description below where you can go and contact us at Integrate Sun, and they can do everything like I talked about. They can give you online consultation and go over all of your goals and give you a really clear picture of what it would look like to have solar at your house. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.